What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Dan here from Headwaters Kayak. And behind me, I have the Wilderness Systems Targa and about 1,000 seagulls. So why are we talking about the Wilderness Targa? Well, honestly, I thought it was unique. I was at my buddy's kayak shop the other day and he had a whole bunch of these things lined up. And for the first time in a long time, I saw a wide sit on top kayak with a frame chair style seat that wasn't set up for fishing. Most of the time when I see a wide stable, like tri hole kind of kayak, it's all geared out for fishing. This one is all geared out for recreational use. So I grabbed it and I said, hey, you mind if I take this thing home and give it a paddle? So here we are. So we're gonna give a quick walk through and then we're gonna hit the water and test this thing out. So Wilderness Systems has always been known for their recreational kayaks, kayaks like the Pungo, the Pamlico, the Tarpon, et cetera. And this one is a completely different look feel from all their other boats. You can tell it has a real narrow entry and kind of this reverse rockered bow on it to help cut through the water. But as you work your way back, it actually kind of goes into this really wide squared off tri-hole design. And we'll flip it over later and, and have a look at that. But it's, all that to say is it's kind of a unique idea. It's got a big grab handle in the front, two grab handles on the side. And this thing is kind of like a front hatch, but it doesn't really, I'm not really sure about this. It doesn't seem to really work like a hatch. It's got a bungee system that you kind of tighten down so you can stick stuff underneath there. So I thought it'd be fun to grab like a five liter dry bag and show that off. But when I stick it in there, it's kind of, it's kind of wonky. I don't really understand the thought process behind this hatch system. Um, it seems like they should have some sort of proprietary thing that fits in there, like a little cooler bag like they have in the back. Um, if anybody likes this or uses this, I'd be curious to hear how you use it because maybe I'm just missing something. It didn't make a ton of sense for me. One thing I thought was kind of interesting on this boat is the amount of cup holders. It's got a big cup holder, like hydro flask size here. It's got a cup holder right here between your legs. Two more cup holders behind the seat. And then it's got this nice built-in cooler with two additional cup holders. Now this one kind of makes sense because the cooler itself actually pops right out of the boat and you've got some side carry handles so you can uh, bring your drinks and take it to the beach or your lunch or whatever. It's got a tank well that has a couple of scuppers so if you get water in, it can still drain out. But I think this cooler sort of tells the story of what this boat's all about. This is a boat that the family's gonna take to the beach, load up and have a nice picnic paddle, or you're gonna paddle over to a shore, or a beach, or an island, and have yourself a nice lunch. It's definitely geared towards stability and not necessarily speed or performance. If you look at the size of this rear end on this thing and how much buoyancy it has underneath, this thing is gonna be solid as a rock, but I'm guessing it's not gonna be very fast. So if you were to compare this boat to something like the Tarpon 100, you'd notice that the boat has a lot more taper in the bow and the stern. So totally unique design. I think what Wilderness was thinking is like, hey, let's make a boat that anybody can hop in and it's gonna feel stable, it's gonna feel comfortable. This is definitely a beginner oriented boat. You see here, they give you a nice standing platform. It's padded and grippy, so if you're getting in and out, you have a nice place to stand up. It seems like it's wide enough at 32 inches wide. It should be stable enough to stand in. We'll definitely test that out when we hit the water. Really big, comfortable foot pedals. A ton of adjustment as well. Most times, you know, you have like 12 or 18 inch tracks. This thing's got almost two feet of foot pedal adjustment. So if you wanted to put a little kid in here to paddle, they'd fit. Or if you wanted to put a big, tall adult, they'd fit as well. And they've got those nice rubberized contact points on the feet, which are really comfortable used to seeing those on like the Tarpon and the Pungo, those other boats. So the seat on this boat's pretty unique. It's actually a frame chair that's screwed down into the boat. There's no high-low adjustment to it. It's just permanently attached. It kind of reminds me of the Perception High Life, which makes sense because this is a cousin company. Perception and Wilderness are both made in the same place. Wilderness just tends to have a little higher end product. Um, it's got the frame chair backrest that flips up and down is kind of cool you can loosen this up fold down flat against the boat one thing i noticed as far as just you know touch on quality control and workmanship is where this screws through 
you know, they missed the hole. Like, look at that a little close. You can see it's nice and flush on this side, but uh, that's kind of uh, that's kind of sketchy right there. I don't know. I guess quality control. The fact that this left the factory and somebody looked at that and you know said it was okay. Yeah, I don't like that. I, I'd want to see. Um, a little bit more attention to detail. So one thing I thought was unique about this boat is there's no internal storage. You're seeing that more and more. Hatches add money, add cost. But they do have all this volume back here that's basically dead space in the boat. Uh, they gave you some bungee, so if you wanted to, you could put a dry bag or, you know, kind of whatever you wanted on this back deck. But I feel like it wouldn't have been too hard. And for a thousand bucks, you would almost expect some sort of internal storage. And they definitely had the space for it. So would have been cool to see that, but you know, not a deal breaker. Come on down here, let's take a look at the stern. They do give you a replaceable keel, which is nice, so you can drag it, and if that wears out, that's a replaceable part. And here you can really see that tri-hole design. A lot of companies are going with that because it gives you a lot of stability and not a ton of wetted surface area. So the idea is it should be efficient, but yet really stable. We'll see how that performs. You know, I get mixed reviews. Some boats do it really well and paddle well. Some boats are a little bit sluggish um, so we'll see how this one does but yeah you can see a lot of volume on the edge this thing's going to feel really stable have extremely high primary because it's basically a pontoon boat in a way you'll see they put the drain plug on the side as opposed to in the back the idea there is you could just tilt the boat on its side and drain out but what i find is when it's on the side it's really hard to get this to be the lowest point to drain all the water out and with no other way to get inside to like sponge it out or bail it out that means there's gonna be water sitting in this boat at times and it's just gonna be difficult to get to it. If this was my boat and I used it all the time, I would probably add a little hatch right here in the back, just a little twist lock hatch that I could get in there and dry it out if I needed to. So I flip it over and the hole design seems really, really interesting. You can see it's real wide and squared off in the middle section. That's gonna give the paddler a ton of support. It's gonna have absolutely huge primary stability because of that. You'll hear me talk about chines of the boat, the edge of the boat and how far forward and back that volume carries and this boat almost goes all the way to the stern all the way to the bow with a ton of volume on the chines that's going to give you lots of primary stability what that's not going to be great for is any sort of dynamic water or moving water this boat's going to feel very two-dimensional and get lofted and kind of pushed around a little bit in currents so i would say this is a pretty flat water specific boat so i get the question from time to time like dan you said it was stable but then you just told me it's not going to be good in rough water why is that well Stability doesn't necessarily mean good performance. Stability means in flat water, the boat's gonna be hard to tip over. But when you start getting that same square profile in waves and chalk where the water's moving up and down, a rounded hole will actually move through the water and with the waves. A square hole is gonna get picked up and lofted around a lot more. So it will still be stable, but punching through the waves, paddling, covering distance, this boat's gonna have a lot more movement and a lot more I guess rock and roll to it than a narrower or more of a rounded style design. Okay, those are my hypothesis about how this boat will paddle based on experience, but we're here at the water. Let's go find out for ourselves. So it is March in California. It's supposed to be springtime, but it has still been really, really cold. So I'm gonna do my best to keep my feet dry today. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is scoot myself all the way back in the boat, bring those foot pedals back to me. And I have lots of room. I'm Six foot two, 34 inch inseam, so there's still have plenty of room. The seat sits up nice and high, completely dry. Any water that got in the boat quickly drained out the scupper. So the capacity is an overall 325 pounds. And I've got about an inch in the scuppers before the water would come onto the deck. So I could easily fit another 100 pounds of gear in here and still have a pretty dry ride. All right, first few strokes, and it feels like it's a little slow to pick up, but not bad. Nice thing is we've got a nice flat day. There's not a lot of wind to blow us around, so it'll give us a good idea of the tracking. And how I like to test tracking is I like to get in the boat, give it a few good strokes, and then just stop paddling and kind of see what the boat does. Does it want to continue to go straight? Does it want to veer off course? And in these conditions, the boat just wants to keep tracking straight, which is really good. That's what you want. I did go online and read some reviews of this boat and it sort of had mixed reviews. Some people said, ah, it paddles like a barge and doesn't track. Other people said how well it tracks. So I think from my perspective, you know, you gotta figure, you're in a 10 foot recreational kayak. It's not gonna be the best tracking boat in the world. When the wind picks up, it's gonna wanna spin around. But for a 10 foot recreational sit on top, I'd say it tracks pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna try to 
Let's max out the speed and see how it does. I can see that bow weight piling up with just a few strokes. <laughs> I guess the moral of that story is if you're concerned about speed, this isn't the boat you're looking for. If you cruise it at just a nice easy pace, it does fine. But the moment you try to accelerate, it just hits that wall and just stops. It doesn't want to go any faster and your work gets exponentially harder. Let's go ahead and uh, do some maneuverability stuff and just see how it does there. Because stability is high. I mean, stability, we'll do a proper stability check, but it almost doesn't even need to be talked about. It's crazy stable. But how's the maneuver here? Just alternate. I like to get in there and do a reverse sweep, forward sweep, just to see how fast it turns around. Basically two strokes. Real maneuverable. With that flat hole, it kind of wants to just spin. So it tracks decent. It spins decent. Now I would say if it was windy out here or choppy, um, the same thing that's making a turn real easy would also be blowing us around in circles because the back being so high and so wide, that thing's gonna wanna turn around on you. But for flat water like we're in today, it's perfect. Now let's go ahead and just do some stability stuff and just kind of work around the boat as if we were, maybe we were trying to get out of, get into our cooler back here. You know, one thing I, didn't, I just noticed, there's no paddle clip on this boat. And there's no bungee to slide my paddle in. I mean, I guess I could slide it under there. That seems like a huge oversight on a recreational kayak where you're gonna be putting your stuff down and trying to get into your cooler. There's not even a groove up here. Normally there'd be something to set your paddle in. Anyway, so that's about as awkward as you can get, right? Getting into your cooler from the back. I do like the little cooler, that's awesome. Unfortunately, I don't have anything in there, but no problem. Got that standing platform, so. Definitely feels stable for standing. So when I was showing you that hole design earlier, remember how pinched it was in the bow and how flat it was in the stern? It definitely feels like when you're standing up, you're a little bit more in that narrow section of the boat. And I've got a couple inches of water in the cockpit here when I'm standing. But as far as stability goes, as long as I keep my feet back, it feels pretty stable. Yeah. Yeah, no complaints there. I think the best way to describe this boat is it's just a platform for recreation on the water. It's really stable, it's got a lot of room, you know, a deck layout that I can cross my feet, I could bring my little dog, I could bring my chihuahua with me. I don't actually have a chihuahua, but if I did, it would ride right up here. You know, I could bring my cooler full of drinks, I can bring a dry bag full of stuff. Um, this is kind of geared towards the family wagon, people that just want to go out to the lake and spend the day on the beach with their friends. This isn't really a kayak I could see you doing very long miles in or going far in. So if you're looking at recreational kayaks, I just would really factor in where do you think you want to go with it. And you know, if you're just recreationally using it close to shore, this is a great platform for hauling gear. But if you're trying to get somewhere, uh, maybe go for something a little longer or even if you want to stick with 10 foot, something like a little bit more sporty like the, uh, the Wilderness Systems Tarpon. As I paddle this, it kind of reminds me of the Feel Free Mokin 10 that we reviewed last year when we were in Bend. The only difference is the Mokin had a couple of rod holders, um, a little bit more you know, dynamic seat positioning, and just in general was, I think, a better value. I think that boat goes for you know, $899 or $949, and this one comes in at $1,000 and feels like it has less stuff. So I'm not sure why Wilderness System priced it the way they did. I think it's a good boat, but I think it would do better at maybe like a $7.99 price point. Um, and I feel like that's sort of the value that I feel when I'm touching a field. I think for the $1,000 price point, it would have things like the phase three seat like you're used to seeing in the Pungo, or maybe some more storage hatches. So all in all, I'm sort of left like scratching my head like, man, who is this boat right for? Um, all I could say is if, you know, you're using it recreationally with like your picnic basket and like your family, a kid, a dog, and you just wanted to go paddle close to a shore and have a picnic, it would be a good boat for that. But otherwise, I don't know, I think I would jump in a few boats and try some other things because I think it's sort of limited in its use. It's a very two-dimensional kayak and I feel like paddle sports has so much to offer and there's so many places you could go that I would probably recommend something maybe a little more versatile.
So that's going to wrap it up with my time with the Target 100. Thank you guys so much for watching. Shout out to Kayak City. They let me borrow this boat and have it for, well, way too long. They gave it to me in November and here we are in March. But thank you guys for supporting the channel. If you guys have any more questions, leave them in the comments below. I will do my best to answer them. And if there's other kayaks in this class that you want to see me review, leave those in the comments as well. Until next time, you guys, this is Dan wishing you happy paddling. We'll see you in the next one.